Neil, uh, it's been a little while since we've had the opportunity to speak to you. How are things? Uh, uh, well, the reason we haven't talked for so long, Dan, is I've been very busy. Uh, it, it's been obviously quite a, an important time uh, with recruitment. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time liaising with Ryan, obviously, uh, and Andrew, uh, and ultimately Simon, in terms of uh, using the budget which we had allocated to us. Uh, and we think we've utilised that to the best of our ability. Uh, bring in Tyrese in recently uh, gets us pretty much to, to our limits. Uh, we, we might be able to create a little wiggle, wiggle room for maybe one more player, but, but that's a long shot at the moment. Tell us a little bit about the, the kind of process without obviously letting us in behind into the, the secret formula. Um, it's been a, a mad summer, obviously, with everything going on uh, you know, in society and, and the mm. finances and so on. Tell us how difficult that's been to, to organise a squad for this season. Uh, may, maybe not quite as difficult as, as what you'd think, in that we uh, hold meetings regularly every other week where myself, Ryan, uh, Shuey, uh, Andrew, uh, Simon are, are involved in and we're planning all, all the time in terms of what we're looking to bring into our Gile squad to improve us. It's a never ending process really. So we have player profiles which are linked to position, positions uh, within our team. We have a certain style of playing. So we kind of know what kind of players we're looking for. Then we need to go into the marketplace and see if we can attract them. Uh, obviously in the current climate, finances are very, very tight uh, and that points us in certain directions. I think we utilise the loan market quite well uh, and we utilise all our contacts quite well, I think. So we're obviously a, a month into the season now. What's your assessment of, of how it's gone so far? Yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting. So uh, a new team, uh, really, uh, in a new league. So every game has been a, a learning opportunity for us, really. Uh, and I think the reality is we could have probably won all four games, but equally, if you know you wanted to be a bit cruel, we, we could possibly have lost all four games as well. So the reality is we've won one, lost one and drawn two, uh, and we're learning quickly into how to maybe just hold on to winning positions, what we need to do to create that point that we didn't quite get at Hull last week, although we were dominating the second half. So we're learning quickly, uh, but the signs are very positive. Everyone in the building is is quite happy in, uh, where we are at the moment. Obviously, the supporting Ryan and, and Shiri with the first team work is, is, is part of your job, but it's certainly not the whole thing. You, you've been putting quite a bit of time, I understand, into the structure of the academy looking forward. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the, the academy, uh, li like the first team of course, it is just one part of the whole football strategy that we created last year uh, that's been operating now probably since last November, December time. Uh, so in terms of the academy, what, what we've done is we've given the uh, academy manager, Phil, Phil Stokes and his staff, clear aims that fit within the overall club's football strategy. So if I share with you, uh, so uh, the, the fundamental aim really is that the academy uh, should, if possible, have uh, a full first team debut each season. Uh, and this year, you'd be delighted to know that we've already done that on two occasions. Ollie Tomlinson did it against Norwich City uh, and the other night, obviously, Brandon Purcell did it. Uh, both of whom acquitted themselves very, very well. Ollie has now moved out and gone on loan to Barnstable which Kevin Nanskerville is monitoring very closely. Uh, and Brandon, I think, will probably train around the first team, but if he needs match time, it's more likely to be in the under-18 team. He is still 16, of course. Uh, so there's no need to rush, but at the same time, if you're good enough, then you're old enough. So we'll touch on Brandon in a moment, because obviously he's had a, a tremendous week in, in that first team debut. But... Um, I guess that the thing to talk about with the academy work is, is not so similar to the first team in that um, it's much more of a slow burn, isn't it? In a way, yeah. you know, work you put in now across the age groups may, may bear fruit, you know, in a decade's time in some cases. Yeah. Um, 
but you are seeing some of the, the fruits already, aren't you? You touched on, on Brandon playing this week, but also the under-18 team uh, under Darren Way has got off to a very strong start. Yeah, well, we, we've restructured the whole thing, so if I, I share with you how that looks. So Kevin Nanskerville is the technical lead from under-23 down to under-15, uh, and he's the link between the whole academy, if you like, really, and the first team, because, of course, he's a first team member of staff uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as well, which is a perfect link. Uh, Darren Way, we brought in again uh, early in the new year, uh, who's got a terrific background, uh, as we know, as manager of Yeovil. He's gone in as our under-18 coach and has made a massive impact uh, on all the players, which has been very, very positive. Uh, we brought Carl uh, Curtis in, of course, from uh, Parkway to take our under-16s. So we've really got a new staff working uh, very closely together, uh, working very, very hard. Uh, with our younger players and there's a whole program below that of course from 14 down to our pre-academy at five years of age uh, with far too many coaches to name every name of course uh, but we, we hope we've developed now a new structure which will allow us to almost have a conveyor belt of talent over the next years so it's not about uh, Ollie and Brandon as a one-off hit didn't we do well it's about the next 10 15 years for Argyle to have a continuation of, of talent coming through. But I suppose, like you say, it's not about those individuals, but they are examples of, of the philosophy, aren't they, in that, as I understand it, Brandon played left centre-back for the yeah. under-18 team. We all play the, the same structure as the first team, which means that when Brandon steps in for his first team debut at 16 years old, he knows exactly what to expect in the position he's in. Uh, ab absolutely. So it's a joined-up approach. So as soon as the players step into our academy they're going to learn the football philosophy which is obviously possession based it's exciting it's attacking it's creative and that will go with them all through the age groups uh, so those i guess i've learned that particular message is over my time uh, in youth football over the years ajax of course set the ball rolling many many years ago uh, so i guess we're, we're adopting that kind of theme so i think you've been involved in your current role for the best part maybe exactly a year now, I don't know yeah, the, I guess, the exact yeah. date, but I mean, a, a year in, how, how do you feel the Academy project in particular is going for you? Uh, I think the Academy project is, is going very, very nicely. Uh, the, the signs are that there's uh, more talent to come through. Uh, we know we have an awful lot of hard work to do with that talent to make sure it does so. Uh, but one of the things we shouldn't underestimate is we've got a, a manager here who has no fear at all of playing young players. That's not the case at every football club in, in England. Uh, there's often a, a caution around putting young players into the team. Uh, Ryan, thankfully, uh, does, doesn't kind of share that attitude. Uh, he's quite happy to take a chance and to give them an opportunity, which is wonderful for the whole football club, it's wonderful for the academy, uh, and it's wonderful for me, although I would tell him off if he didn't. So how important is that? Uh, I know <laughs> um, not every team does it, but, but how important is it for you in terms of recruiting the best young talent that they can see a clear and designated pathway through to the first team? You talk about clubs, some successful clubs across the country have done it. Southampton maybe springs to mind as one. Mm. Um, that message is vital, isn't it? That they can come yeah. through all the way through. It's vital not only for the players, I think for the supporters as well. Uh, you know, when you, you hear Harry Kane score for Tottenham Hotspur and they sing he's one of our own, the, the, the same thing. Uh, so we currently have two outstanding young players in our first team uh, who, providing they're selected of course in Michael Cooper and Luke Jeffcott, uh, look as though they're already starting to make a real strong impact in the performance of our first team, which is ultimately what we want our young players to do. So the role models are there currently there are role models developing uh, and, and with a bit of luck, uh, and please don't ask me for any names, but with a bit of luck there are lots of others to come. So, so notwithstanding the, the excellent work so far, um, what, what's next for the Academy, what's next in the project? What, what is next I think is to uh, I think uh, let the staff bed in, uh, let the new structure bed in, uh, Ideally, we'd recruit more quality. That would be probably the next stage, Dan. Uh, uh, it's very important for us to make sure that any talent in, in Plymouth initially doesn't get missed uh, and obviously comes to Argyle first. Uh, and then we want to look further and further afield. 
we we should really ideally be the predominant force in Devon and Cornwall so that would be a name of ours to recruit from all over those two counties to get the best talent for us. Would you say that that's maybe, not to put words in your mouth, but would you say that that's maybe not always been the case in terms of the local region? Uh, well, I, I don't know really, if I'm, if I'm honest. Uh, I hear rumours about it, it was this, it was that. That, that doesn't really interest me. That, that's history. Uh, what does interest me is today and the future. Uh, and as I say, our new structure, our new staffing model, uh, and, and with an increased focus on local talent, with a bit of luck, we'll have more talent playing outside on Home Park. So part of that strategy in terms of um, recruiting the, the best local talent is, is forging networks, isn't it, with local clubs? And as I understand that um, we've struck our first agreement with, with Plymouth Parkway. Um, are you able to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So we've, we've created a, a, a very exciting project. Uh, so we want to develop partner clubs all over Devon and Cornwall. Uh, we, we would like to reach out, we want to offer some support in terms of education, so we want to offer them coaching clinics, we want to offer them sports science support, uh, anything we can do with our expertise here within our academy we would like to share with everybody else. Uh, and yes of course we're looking for the best players all over Devon and Cornwall uh, and hopefully by joining uh, in partnerships with other clubs that will help us to do that. And Parkway is our very first uh, partner club. We're delighted that that's the case because obviously we're, we're both in the same city. There is a logic to that. Uh, and we're also going to play games at Parkway. The first team have uh, an agreement where they're going to play a friendly with them in the next couple of years. Uh, so it, it's moving in a very nice direction uh, for both parties, I believe. And in terms of, uh, obviously you've got your kind of um, year by year goals in terms of player appearances and so on for, for, from the academy but, but what does a successful academy look like to you in, in five years time for us? Yeah so that's what a great question so uh, I mentioned about the, the one debut every year uh, which would be our main focus our main aim but equally every time that Plymouth Argyle play in a competitive fixture the first team we want to have a minimum of four homegrown players on that team sheet uh, so with a, I, I do know the stats actually for, for this year uh, and that's quite healthy uh, but the challenge is to replicate that every single game so if Michael Cooper and Luke Jeffcott are in that 18 come Saturday we need two others alongside them as well uh, to be successful uh, thinking longer term we, we want as many local players from Devon and Cornwall from Plymouth if you like uh, who can run out there in green and white and be one of our own and that's of course you know the the bet I, th I suppose now more than ever with the, with the current financial situation being able to develop your own talent is 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 rightly front and center in the club's long term vision isn't it H has to be a massive massive uh, interest for the club uh, if we can produce our own of course we will save money in the long term uh, but there's also so many other rewards that come with that uh, knock on effects as I say the supporters feel better more supporters would come I guess uh, homegrown role models are massive I think back to my time at Everton with Wayne Rooney of course and you know there are others I mentioned Harry Kane before at Tottenham and there are other examples right around the country uh, we, we've got two in our first team right now who are developing very very nicely uh, we want them to play for Plymouth Argyle for as long as possible uh, if one day they move on uh, and, and every young player does that at some point in their career uh, then that's fine but if they do move on then we want the next ones in there and we're working on that as we speak. Thanks for chatting to us Neil. You're welcome, thank you.